Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn, and it is Food for Thought Friday. I'm so glad that you're with us. Love to share nuggets of wisdom that God has spoke to me, whether it's through uh, my quiet time in the mornings so while I'm having a good cup of coffee, reading a Bible or a devotional book, or could be through a conversation I have with somebody, or maybe a podcast that I've listened to, or a sermon I've heard, or uh, could be uh, through social media. Sometimes uh, God speaks to those things, but uh, love doing this program. I get a lot of feedback. People say quite often it's their favorite program we do each week, and I'm just so thankful. Uh, I get to honor my dad because that was one of his sayings when he was giving you wisdom. He could subtly just say food for thought, and then he would change the subject, and yet later when you were processing the conversation, you're like, man, that was really smart. I need to do that. So I hope that God speaks to you just the way my people used to speak me back before he went to heaven in 2016. I want to start off, though, with one of my favorite Bible verses. Uh, it's Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 and 26. And I really believe somebody either listening today or watching on our YouTube channel that you need to hear this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Oh, friends, just when I say that, it just brings me peace and just joy and just knowing that God loves you and he wants to bless you. He wants to be gracious to you. He wants to help lift you up and he wants to give you peace. And maybe you need to write Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 and 26 on post-it notes and put it in your bathroom mirror, by the coffee pot, on the refrigerator, maybe even on the light switches in your home, the dashboard of your car, on your laptop, uh, in your office or cubicle at work, uh, you know, in your notebook, your wallet, um, just, you know, whatever places that you would see it and say that. And I believe you said that quite often through the day. How much peace and joy would that bring you? I'll read it one more time. Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 and 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Oh, friends, such good, good stuff there for Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. You know, one of the things that I've talked about before, but it's been a long time, is uh, I think one of the things that we don't do well in the United States, and then as, even as followers of Jesus, that we don't take time to grieve. And, you know, there's a fine line there. I mean, you know, you can't grieve forever. I mean, eventually, you know, you have to, you know, say, okay, God, I understand why this happened, but I'm going to trust you, and uh, maybe when I get to heaven someday, you'll let me know, even though. As I've learned, I probably won't care once I get to heaven, but uh, sometimes the enemy can keep us in grief forever. I mean, you look up and six months has gone by, a year, and, you know, that's fine. First year is always tough when you lose a loved one. You go through all those holidays, but two years, five years, and then a decade goes by. And, you know, it's not that you don't hurt. Uh, it doesn't mean that, you know, if, if you grieve some, it doesn't mean that, you're weak and all those things, but uh, I think what happens is you start to heal if you allow yourself to. And you talk about it with people and talk to God about it. Sometimes you may even need to talk with your pastor or a trained mental health uh, counselor, okay? But as you do get some good healing, then what you can do is, you know, yes, you'll come into things that are painful and reminder of a certain person or situation, but also what you can do instead of falling, you know, you see a hole coming up, instead of walking and falling in that hole and saying stuck in it for years, what you learn to do is you see that pain, which is that hole, but you learn to walk around the hole so you don't get consumed by it and stay there for years. And I heard that when we had just a, a powerful story shared a few years ago on hope is here and i just know that i know that friends god loves to heal our hearts and he wants to try to do things to help us through the grief but i also think sometimes we don't allow ourselves to grieve and you know i think things that we grieve are the loss of a loved one uh you know a loss of a pet i mean i know pets can become like family um you know or uh, you know a divorce obviously oh just horrific or even a breakup of a relationship and, you know, we, we just need to allow ourselves time to grieve. But things that I think that we don't allow ourselves to grieve that maybe we need to give it a little more consideration to is major life transitions. 
being unable to achieve a goal or fulfill a dream. You know, a lot of us, most of us, life doesn't play out the way we thought it would. Uh, maybe, you know, we wake up and we're in our 50s, 60s, you know, could be even our 40s. And, you know, you look back and you think, you know, man, I'm not living the life that I hoped I would have when I was a teenager, somebody in my early 20s. Or maybe even the, the effects of a big decision. Uh, even sometimes when those decisions are ultimately good for us, but while we're going through them, man, it can be painful. Uh, losing a job. I mean, man, I've been there. Switching careers. You know, I mean, you've been somewhere for a while, and then if you try something new, there's still that familiarity you lose, the relationships, sometimes even physical uh, location you lose, and you have to move in another state. Uh, sometimes a friendship ends. Um, I can remember there was a pastor of several states away that we kind of developed a friendship. We met at a conference um, many years ago, and he loved basketball. He was from Indiana, but he lived out west. And um, I wound up knowing the head coach at the University of Indiana, which is where this guy graduated from. And he was a huge basketball fan. And so we were able to really connect on that. And, uh, man, we talked quite often for a year or two. And then all of a sudden he just started ghosting me. And to this day, I still don't know what I did wrong. And, uh, man, it was painful. But then I just really had to realize, okay, God, sometimes you bring in people for a relationship, friendships for a lifetime. Other times it's just for a season. And so I can also say now I don't have any ill will or pain in my heart to him. But, but I had to take a while to grieve the loss of that friendship because I totally didn't see it coming. Also, uh, sometimes, you know, we grieve because, you know, the person we were that we were before something traumatic or life altering occurs, you know, we're just not that person. And, you know, it, it, it can be tough, especially when you start having physical limitations. And, you know, I mean, I just want to encourage you to allow yourself to grieve a little bit. I already talked about how maybe to move to a new location. Sometimes that's excitement, but sometimes you have to downsize a house and, you know, uh, man or you just have to you, you lose a place that you really love to uh living and you know there's also seasons in in a faith you know um we just wind up sometimes having to have a shift and we grow and man uh, god takes us to a higher level but it can be painful at times and you know sometimes we don't take times to grieve that and i think that's one of the things that it's so important to be a person of faith and I think it's so important, as a friend of my mom's used to say, you know, it's okay to visit there, but don't set up camp there. We have to be busy. The enemy, I mean, be careful. The enemy will get us busy just living in the past. And next thing you know, there's been several years go by, and we're still looking the past at wounds, disappointments, hurts, and anger. So I think there's, uh, you know, just something to be said there about make sure we take time to grieve. And I don't think we do a good job of that in this country and a lot of times even as Christians. But we also be careful about not spending too much time and letting years go by with that. This is not spiritual, but I thought it was a great quote by Confucius. He said, we have two lives, and the second begins when we realize we only have one. <laughs> I think that's great. You know, sometimes we're trying to live somebody else's life. And yet God, the Bible, he says, he has, well, God has a plan for your one and only life. And I've been guilty of trying to live somebody else's life, maybe one of my siblings, okay, or, you know, my father's or something. And yet, friends, God has a role for each of us to play in his life, a purpose specifically for us. And so I want to encourage you not try to live somebody else's life, but just to live the life that God's given you and play the hand of cards, as the old saying goes, the hand you've been dealt with in life to the best of your ability. And you'll be amazed what God can do. The old saying, he can make lemonade out of lemons, friends. And, you know, we just have to, you know, we look, at, look to God and say, okay, God, you know, I don't always understand you, but I trust you. And sometimes we don't know where to go. And Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge God and he will make your path straight. And friends, I've seen that in my life over and over again, but I have to be honest, quite often I'm not enjoying it while I'm on that journey. I love what Clint Murphy said. Uh, he said, failure is a stepping stone to success. Research shows that at the top of their field, people have failed the most. Say it again. Research shows that those that are at the top of their field, they have failed the most. 
In other words, they've taken chances. So instead of viewing failure as a, a loss, you should consider it a lesson to be learned on the path to winning. Each failure's lessons bring the goal closer to us. Love the quote by Albert Einstein. He says, failure is success in progress. <laughs> Say that one more time. Albert Einstein. Failure is success in progress. As the old saying goes, friends, we know ways that don't work when we have failure, right? And, you know, you've heard me talk about the book Failing Forward by John Maxwell and just amazing book. I'm fortunate to have a couple of pages in that book in chapter six and the title of the chapter I was fortunate to be in. It's not what happens to me, but what happens in me. And the biggest thing I learned from that book, this is not anything I said or did, but he, he talked about earlier in that book before chapter six, talking about failure is an event, not a person. But yet the enemy wants you because you have a, an event, a season in your life, an event where there, you failed or had a failure, but you're not a failure. The event was, but you can learn from it. But we have to be gear, get, uh, careful of not getting paralysis by analysis. We can analyze over and over what happened and then be afraid to try something again. And I just want to remind you, friends, that, you know, sometimes you just got to throw that rear view mirror away just say yep didn't get that one right i blew it wish i'd handle things differently but you know what god bible says you work all things together for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose and i'm going to stand on that and trust that today and he will friends i've seen you do it in my life and thousands of others over my 50 plus years but the one thing I've seen hold me back, I'm embarrassed to admit this, but I know somebody listening or watching on our YouTube channel needs to hear this today. We have to be careful about letting fear control us. And I love this quote by Zig Ziglar. heard it many years ago. Fear has two meanings, using that acronym fear, F-E-A-R. Forget everything and run or face everything and rise. The choice is yours each day. So friends, I want to encourage you today to face your fears and know that God will be with you and that he wants to help you and that you're never by yourself. But sometimes, friends, if we're going to get through the fear and we talked about facing it, we got to do what Jim Rohn, uh, he's been around for many, many years, does, does a great job with uh, just, I, I would call it positive leadership, um, does a lot of sales training things, but just a, 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 he's a man of faith also. But I love this quote. I recently ran up on his on Twitter. He said, your life does not get better by chance. It gets better by change. Ouch. That is so good. That is a food for thought nugget of wisdom today. Your life does not get better by chance. It gets better by change. So I got to ask you today, what is it that you need to change? You're waiting for God to just do something, and yet you're not making any changes. And yes, friends, God can miraculously do things. He's done them in my life. But most of the time, he wants me to be involved in the process. And I got to ask you what it is that you need to change, whether it's exercising, drinking more water, spending more time with Jesus, watching less TV, uh, making priority to spend time with family. I mean, the list goes on and on of things that we can change. So things just don't, by chance, get better. And last but not least, uh, uh, I love the quote by Joyce Meyer. She says, if you complain, you will remain. But if you praise, you will be raised. So I want to encourage you to have that mindset today. Say, I'm not going to complain because I don't remain in this funk, but I'm going to praise God, and that way I will be raised. Thanks for watching. You've been blessed by this program. I hope you'll share it with somebody else. My name's Greg Horn. We'll see you Monday on Hope is Here.